welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. This is going to be a good day. Um, Carol Kent is back with us. She's one of our regulars, and she travels everywhere, one of the most prolific writers uh, today in Christendom. And we're just thrilled that she has time to be with us at least once a month and with this dealing with the subject of prisons, which she knows very well, because her one and only son is in prison for life. And how God can take something so horrible and use it in the way he has, uh, something only God could do. And we'll get into the details on that, but I'm thrilled that uh, Carol is back. And I'm going to join Stephanie, and we're making a mashed cauliflower, you know, like you mash potatoes. Personally, I think you could fool your kids with this one. Uh, however, we have people in the studio today who think that would be impossible. It's pretty hard to get broccoli and cauliflower down your kids, isn't it? So um, I guess we'll let Stephanie be the judge on that, okay? And before I join her, I want to again offer you the Seven Money Rules for Life by Mary Hunt. And as I've mentioned before, this isn't from a financial advisor or anything like that. It's from a woman, a very smart woman, who went bankrupt and she learned a lot about it. And so she's writing a book in, in a way that we can really understand. So it could be a life changer for you. I'm not kidding, you know, when it comes to money. Let's not kid ourselves, it's pretty important. So for that gift of at least $15, we'll send it to you as long as they last. And most people nowadays are using credit cards, 1-800-229-0059, if uh, that's the way you like to handle it. Or write to me at Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, we will get it out to you. You know, Stephanie? Um, my son and other people have told me, he's a pastor, that there's a growing, growing, growing percentage who pay their tithes online. I, oh, I pay it by credit card because I like to get the points. Yeah. So, but so then I pay, it off. I pay it off. I swipe my card and like two days later I go in and I just pay it. I don't mm -hmm. even wait for the bill to mm -hmm. come. Well, uh, you brought us, uh, oh, she brought us tell. a show and tell. So I was at this, one of my favorite stores, and I saw this adorable burlap tree skirt with the lace trim. Never would have thought of it, but perfect. It was $30, uh -huh. and I thought, I can't justify that, so I made one. Oh, you are so smart. Yeah. Isn't that the cutest thing? Now, my daughter-in-law loves anything that's the farm, you know. Mm -hmm. I bet mm -hmm. she would love that. I'm also making a table runner and mm -hmm. some table <gasps> covers, oh, all cute. for probably what I would have paid for that one. Like a country Christmas. Yeah, it's country yeah. Christmas at the O'Neill's. So that's and my show and tell. I want to recap something, though. Remember when we did the... Um, favors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got something on Facebook about We yeah. had three holiday favors that we did. Mm -hmm. The pilgrim hats and the little there's, Santa Clauses. Yeah, uh -huh. there's the pilgrim, there's the pilgrim hats. hats. Yeah, we had a picture on, on my Facebook. Um, a woman was doing it with her grandchildren. And there's the Santa Claus mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. little strawberries. Yep. Oh, they're so cute. And those, uh, well, those are good. They, those are well, just torts. calories. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. But we got such good feedback. Yeah. Plus, I got some from the wreath that Wanda and Lori did. Mm -hmm. I, people sent me pictures mm -hmm. of the wreaths that they made, mm -hmm. and they looked so beautiful. They did a great job. And Carol will be interested in this. I got word that those favors we did for the holidays, this sweet, sweet lady, we got some of the most wonderful people in our churches mm -hmm. and women who quietly do the will of God, and they're, they're only going to be acknowledged when they get to heaven, but that's a pretty big deal. They ordered the, the um, directions for mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. because they want to take them and take them to a correctional, woman's correctional center. I love that. Isn't that neat? That's fabulous. So God bless you. Hey, I'm just glad people are watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> and doing what we're, what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so okay. cauliflower, smashed, mashed. We'll call them mashed. I call them smashed. This is a um, one head and we... Took all the florets, cut them up like that. Yep, and then we just um, put some water in and we boiled it, just like you would potatoes for mashed potatoes. And I'm going to cut up a little fresh parsley. Mm -hmm. You're not just looking pretty this show, sister. You gotta work. Yeah, this is hard. So I'm just gonna mash this mm -hmm. up a little bit. You just wanna, you know, get it to where it's soft, just like a, just like potatoes. Yep. And then we got some butter we're gonna put in. 
and some cream. Real cream. Yes. Yummy. I'm not going to put all that yet. And some cheese, Parmesan. Mm -hmm. And pepper. That's it. That's it. Because that, that cheese has got no salt in it. Yes. And, and then you mash it like potatoes. Up. Yes. And gives you a wonderful variety for a, a side dish. Yeah, this is actually, I, I don't know if I should admit this or not, but I did Atkins for a long time. And this is an Atkins, would be like an Atkins approved oh, side yeah? dish. Yeah. Well, Atkins has proven to be pretty good through the years. Yeah. There are other diets out now that very much copy it. They just mm -hmm. take a different name. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put this in here. Oh, and while you do that, I gotta taste it. That's one thing I do and well. And you could bake, it doesn't, the directions don't say it, but you could put the cheese on top of this and bake it and mm -hmm. melt that cheese on top, mm -hmm. but go ahead and taste it and see what Oh, gotta like. put this on it. Oh yes, and the parsley. Yes. Yummy. So you're ready for Christmas, right? Yes. <laughs> Thanks to Stephanie. So good? She I'm challenged so me in front you. of thousands and Actually, thousands and thousands me. of people. You beat me. But I did it. I finished wrapping them. Okay. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Oh, parsley. Yep. Yep. I just got one for it. Get your own. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. Isn't that good? That's my lunch. Yep. No question. Your kids would eat that. It tastes like kind of like mashed It tastes like mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yep. So That's if you, delicious. If you want this recipe, mm -hmm. we will be glad to send it to you. Best way is email. If not, write to me and we'll send it to you. Free. <coughs> we like free. Yeah, stay with me. <laughs> and if you haven't met Carol Kent, you're going to and you're going to love her. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Carol, welcome back. Thank you. It is so good to be here. Where have you been since you were here? Well, I went to South Africa and uh, had a wonderful time speaking at two Sisters of Africa conferences. Wow. We had about 1,300 young women in both of the events, and women came to faith in Christ, and some who were really struggling in various areas of their lives laid their Isaacs down, and we're mm -hmm. talking about that today. Mm -hmm. But they let go of what they could not control and gave it to Jesus. So that has been very exciting. And of course, I've done a lot of fall ministry retreats as well. I was in Palm Coast, Florida this weekend. Mm -hmm. and beautiful uh, place. Beautiful. And before that, Elliott, Maine, and Morganton, North Carolina, where I had never been before. And I find mm -hmm. women everywhere are saying, how can I apply God's word to my life because I know the principles work? I am such a strong believer in retreats. Yes. Because when you get away, usually they save some money to get to go. There, there's a sacrifice there. And they get away from that routine and, and all of that. I, I used to tell them, don't worry about the dirty dishes in the sink. They'll be there when you get back. <laughs> Definitely they'll be there. <laughs> but it's a life changer. It mm. is. And I think when women get away with their friends and they have time to laugh out loud, wipe mm -hmm. a few tears, mm -hmm. share over a couple of meals, and just listen mm -hmm. to great worship in God's truth, mm -hmm. transformation takes place. Amen. Now, Every time you come, and she comes once a month, we'll always have her tell briefly her story because we have new viewers every time. Good news, since you were here, we have a new station, a big station oh, in Denver, Colorado, my hometown. I'm a Coloradoan, you know. Oh, that is exciting. I know it. I it's, love it's Denver. It's a big, full power. It goes up uh. into Cheyenne and a little part of Nebraska. So please, I want so desperately to hear uh, from somebody in Colorado, as people are gradually finding the station. So would you please do that? There'll be an email at the end of the program and all, but I'm just so anxious to hear from Colorado. So um, let's go over your book, 
this book has been out a while, but it keeps coming out expanded and new. This yes, this is the brand new 10 year anniversary edition, mm -hmm. and it has an extra chapter on perseverance. It's called When I Lay My Isaac mm -hmm. Down. And uh, boy, that is something that my husband, Gene, and I had to do when uh, something happened that totally changed the rest of our lives. You had uh, what a lot of people would call a perfect life. You had raised a boy. Hey, did he go through the uh, Naval? Yes, he's a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, a, a young man who had a heart for Jesus mm -hmm. and loved to do compassionate acts of kindness for others. But he married a previously married woman who had two little girls. There were multiple allegations of abuse against the biological father. And uh, it appeared that this father was going to get unsupervised visitation with the little girls. Uh, it, it also looked like Jason and his wife and family were going to go to Hawaii for their first overseas assignment. And that would mean longer visitation periods with the father. And in retrospect, our son unraveled emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, spiritually. And we got a middle of the night phone call telling us our son had shot and killed the biological uh, father of his two little stepdaughters. And so we literally went into shock, Arthlene. I, I, just thinking about it still sends those waves through me of hardly being able to breathe and feeling that nausea that comes over you when you get a shocking a call shocking. like that in the middle of the night. I had never had a situation where I felt like I couldn't even walk. I, I fell to the floor and crawled my way into the next room because I, I simply could not fathom that this had happened. And step by step, of course, it was kind of a slam dunk because people witnessed oh, yes. it was first degree murder and he is in uh, incarcerated for life. Yes. And so Carol, thank God, somehow mustered the ability with the help of God to write the story and that's when I lay my Isaac down you can get that on Amazon or any <clears throat> any bookstore um, how long after the uh, incident did you begin to write oh it took a long time we went through two and a half years and seven postponements of the trial our attorney had told us that we should not speak publicly or do anything uh, that would bring out from us in a place that could be recorded in written or spoken form anything having to do with the crime or what had happened since then until after the trial because something might be used against our son during the trial. And, you know, God is so good, mm -hmm. Arthlane. In retrospect, it was God's mercy because when you have a shocking mm -hmm. crisis happen in your life, often you can hardly breathe yourself let alone talk about it with other people. And I feel like God gave me that time to be able to begin to assimilate what had happened, mm -hmm. to begin taking uh, breaths of air that would allow me to keep going and to learn how to live in my new normal, which, which was huge. So it was uh, 2005 when, uh, or excuse me, 2004 when this book was released and the crime happened in 1999. And I had spent the past year, so from 2003 to four, writing the book. So it really was a long time. A book takes a while to get out. It might be interesting to know what you would have written early on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you it would have been jumbled. It would have Riding sounded of a mad woman. chaotic. <laughs> uh, I, I think when you're in gut-wrenching pain, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't make wise choices. And that yeah. might have been true in my case. But God doesn't waste our pain. No. He doesn't waste our sorrow. He doesn't waste our mistakes mm -hmm. and sin. Uh, it can all be something to learn and mm -hmm. and closer to him. Uh, can you, your book, uh, When I Lay My Isaac Down, maybe that title is the most powerful metaphor I've ever heard anywhere. 
Well, I was not sure what the biblical foundation of the book on our story would be until I was at one of those retreats we mm -hmm. talked about earlier with my dear friend, singer and recording artist, Bonnie Keen. Mm -hmm. And she had co-written and sung a song called The Day I Lay My Isaac Down at a retreat where I was speaking even prior to speaking publicly about what had happened. Mm -hmm. And I was in a puddle of tears afterwards. And uh, there were a lot of people around. I wasn't able to talk to her, but I emailed her later. And I said, Bonnie, I believe through your song, God has just revealed revealed to me how to frame our story within a biblical context. Could I have your permission to use the idea mm -hmm. of when I lay my Isaac down? And she immediately said yes. And uh, Arthleen, when I went to the scripture in Genesis 22, it was so clear because I, I remember knowing in my heart I needed to relinquish what I loved most to the God who loved my son even more than I did. And uh, I, I was reading Stop. how when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, the Bible said that he got up early the next morning to make the trip to Mount Moriah. And I kept thinking, mm. well, if that had been me, I would have waited until at <laughs> least noon, <laughs> hoping God would change his mind. Let's yeah. have a do-over plan here. But Abraham obediently got those uh, donkeys saddled, and, and it was a three-day journey to Mount Moriah. Can you imagine no. mm -hmm. looking? at your son and knowing he's the object of the sacrifice and they got there to Mount Moriah and uh, young Isaac looked up at his father and he said dad we have the wood and we have the fire but dad where is the lamb and wise Abraham mm -hmm. said God himself will provide the lamb. And the scripture says that Abraham bound his son and laid him on the altar. And I love discovering what biblical phrases mm -hmm. and words mean. And I know you love the word mm -hmm. of God too, Arthlane. And I looked that phrase up that Abraham used for laying his son down. And it actually meant a lifting up. And so, in other words, when Thank Abraham you, laid his Isaac down, it was a supreme act of high worship. Now, we have to quickly add, mm. Isaac had done nothing wrong to merit mm. the sacrifice. Mm. My son had taken the life of an innocent man, and uh, yet I knew in my heart that I identified with the parent who needed to unclench fists. That was still your Isaac. Oh, that was yeah. my Isaac. And I had to lay him down, trusting God with whatever the results of that trial would be. And it has been and will forever be the toughest decision of my life. It's, it's hard for any of us to understand, you know, what that process was. Yes. Uh, you have to live it. But I, th I was thinking of the, some of the great movies mm -hmm. of Abraham. Oh, yes. Taking him. And the Bible doesn't say that Isaac resisted at all. No, it, which seems miraculous <laughs> to me. So God must have prepared his heart ahead of time. And I believe he must have had a tremendous faith and belief that his father would only do what was right in the eyes of the Lord, or I think there would have been great resistance. Yeah, because he was he was not a little kid. No, he Maybe no. could have put up a fight because and maybe Abraham, one over a, a, Abraham would have been about 112 father. years oh, old, wouldn't he? That's, that's pretty Take old. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great thought uh -huh. because if there was resistance, that would have changed the whole picture There's considerably. There's no wonder that Abraham is in that Oh, Hebrews yes. 11. Yes. That's uh, that's kind of In the, the epitome. Hall of fame. Yeah, all of them. Okay, now, was there a moment when you did that that you can mm. point to emotionally and almost physically, yes. date, time, place? Oh, yes. Really? Uh, I had uh, gotten on a plane to visit my son for the first time since his, his arrest. And Gene had already left for Florida earlier because he was moving Jason's wife and stepdaughters from Panama City, where he had been in a naval dive school, 
to Orlando where Jason was incarcerated. And so Gene had already been allowed a 15 minute visit with our son and he was not allowed to come with me. Each parent was allowed 15 minutes. And I remember getting to the jail and having to wait a long time. And when I was called into the visitation area, I could see that there would be a plexiglass window that I would look through. I knew there would be an officer listening to everything we said. And uh, I heard a shuffle come down the hallway. And uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was Jason, and he had on ankle cuffs mm -hmm. with a chain between his legs. And so the shuffle I heard was that he could only take two or three inches in a step. And uh, then as he rounded the bend, I saw him for the first time, not in a naval uniform, but in jailhouse blues. And he had on handcuffs attached to a waist chain. And he mm. had had a horrible beating. Ten inmates had jumped him just days earlier, and uh, they were kicking him in the head. Uh, when I saw him for the first time, his face was covered in scabs. As I looked at him face on, both eyes were fully bloodshot. He had a big gash in one of his ears, and two of his front teeth had been broken off. And for a moment, all I could do was see my broken child and sob. And there a mom and her boy looked at each other through the glass, and, and we were speechless. And finally, finally, I was able to form words as I looked at my boy, and I said, Jason Paul Kent, there is nothing you could ever do that would stop my unconditional love for you, son. Your dad and I are here for you. And Arthling, that 15 minutes passed so quickly, and Jason was taken off. It was time for me to leave. I got out to that jailhouse parking lot, and I could not drive because the tears were just rolling, and I couldn't I couldn't turn the faucet off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, as I sat there, I remember thinking back to the scripture we discussed earlier, and I I looked up right there in my car in the parking lot, and I opened my hands and I began to pray. And I said, God, I relinquish to you what I cannot control. God, I give you all of my expectations about our happy family reunions and about having my, my family at my Thanksgiving table and, and at my Christmas table. God, I give to you what I cannot control. And uh, that wow. was not a one-time thing. No, but that's pretty early on, but I would say, in the I, whole story. I have to say, there were days when I would say, I'm taking, know, taking that back. back. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm the taking altar. it back. And so I want every listener to know that relinquishment is a process. Mm -hmm. And when you lay your Isaac down, you might find yourself the next day trying to grab back what you gave to the Lord yesterday. And Isaac's not always a person no. at all. Um, I wanted to mention before we run out of time that what we're doing here, Carol, has really caught fire. Mm. I, and I remember when we were sitting here and God spoke to me and said, see if she can come on every month because prisons and, and incarcerated uh, men and women and their families, it's huge. Yes, it's it huge is. and it needs a ministry. Um, and we did get an email from a precious, uh, and I'm not going to go into detail because I wouldn't want to, um, you know, anybody figure yes. out who it is, but exactly the same thing mm -hmm. when uh, their prized daughter with a IQ out of this world mm -hmm. and all uh, DUI. She went to jail for DUI. Mm. Uh, but I guess she's back on another track. But she she responded exactly the way you did. Yes. Uh, those And I've had those moments of mm -hmm. anguish where this horrible news comes, usually at night. Yes. You can uh, almost feel this guttural wail coming mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to, uh, uh, we got just a couple minutes, but how much healing came from writing the book? Because I, I think you would write a few paragraphs and then go in mm -hmm. the corner and cry. I did, I did. And I allowed myself that privilege. Mm -hmm. And I just want every viewer to know that it's okay 
if you have tears, that God loves you dearly, and it's okay to let him know how disappointed you are and mm -hmm. what has transpired. And uh, we may have many viewers today who have Isaacs that might look like financial crises mm -hmm. or a child born with a disability or a grandchild running away from God, mm -hmm. or maybe they, they have a terminal illness and they don't get it, and they just say, God, why? This is your Isaac. This is That's your it. Isaac. That's it. And God is saying, lay it down. And I cannot urge strongly enough for you to get the book, although it has, it's a decade old now, but it is continually updated, and um, it's pretty hard to lay down. It's a real page turner. Uh, we've got some great things coming up next month. Carol and I are going to talk, and Jason has sent us some information. I want to know what a prisoner does all day long. It's pretty interesting stuff, so uh, be sure that uh, you join us when Carol's back on next month. And uh, just hopefully this message will get out that we need to minister more than judge. We need to minister. Uh, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Carol will be back with us next month and we'll continue to explore this uh, interesting subject. You know, the scripture is certainly not silent on the subject of prisons. They are mentioned in both the Old and New Testaments. They hold accounts of those who, though innocent, are incarcerated, like Joseph, and the guilty who should be locked up, like Barabbas. The apostles Peter and Paul were both imprisoned. One was miraculously set free and the other executed. Paul, who was executed, wanted us to know that he was not a prisoner of Rome, rather a prisoner of Christ. In the past, I've been involved in ministry in some of America's maximum security prisons, and what I witnessed always left me changed. After leaving these institutions, my appreciation for liberty and freedom definitely kicked up another notch. The 142nd Psalm describes a very bad day in the life of King David. He writes about crying out loud. I pour out my complaint. No one cares for my soul. And listen to this. He cries, bring my soul out of prison. Friend, do you identify with the heart cry of David? His message resonates because you can be in prison without being locked up physically. Bill and Gloria Gaither's song, Let Freedom Ring, addresses that very situation they wrote God breathed freedom into every fiber of creation, and he meant for us to all be free and whole. But when my Lord bought freedom with the blood of his redemption, his cross stamped pardon on my very soul. So I'll sing it out with every breath. I'll let the whole world hear it, this hallelujah anthem of the free. For iron bars and heavy chains can never hold us captive. The Son has set us free, and free indeed. Friend, that freedom is yours for the asking. And as we leave the air today, take time to cast all your cares on Jesus, because he will gladly lift them from you. He wants you to live free and whole. Please think about it, and join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. Catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeeper.